Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. Last time we learned about terms such as one hot, hashing, term frequency, stop words, and inverse document frequency. This time we're applying what we've learned to document classification. To do this classification, we'll use a naive base algorithm. The environment I am using is IBM Watson Studio with a Jupyter Notebook using Spark and Python. Take a look at the description below the video for a URL to create a free account on that platform. The description also includes URLs for the notebook I am using here. To use this notebook, you'll have to download the data as described in the intro to the notebook. The data is a set of articles already classified. This is required since the naive base algorithm uses supervised learning. It is interesting to note that some articles content is only blah blah blah. I included in the notebook a script to remove files that contain that. You may want to try with and without those files to see the difference in the accuracy of the classification. Hopefully, this also reminds you that you should do data exploration to understand what you are working with. The data is stored in the IBM Cloud Storage. To read it, I need the proper credential and API. Note that this API is based on the Amazon AWS S3 REST API. The easiest way to access the data is to insert the streaming body object into the empty cell. I left an example of this for you to compare. First, I added the import of Spark Session. Then, I shortened the name of the client to Client. Finally, I removed the reading part of the file. I then download the file and unzip it. Now that I have the file locally, I can use the Spark context to read the files into an RDD where each line contains an entire file text. Then I convert the RDD into a data frame. After I create a lookup dictionary for the document classes, I convert the text into an array of words. Remember, from the previous video, we convert all the words to lowercase to make sure we don't have unnecessary duplication. Before we continue the conversion, we can look at some basic statistics. Here we look at the minimum, maximum, and average number of words in a document. We can then look at the 20 smallest documents. More should be done here, but the minimal exploration tells us that we may want to do more to better understand our documents. As I mentioned at the beginning, we even had some documents without real content. Okay, we're ready to use TFIDF that we talked about in video 27. SparkML comes with the hashing TF class that allows us to hash the word and return a term frequency sparse vector. Then we create an IDF model and apply the model to the sparse vector. This means that words will be weighed by how many documents they are found in. This means that stop words like the would likely get a value of zero since they are likely found in all the documents. After splitting our data into training and testing sets, we're ready to create our naive base model. We create the model and score the testing data. What constitutes a successful model? What is the minimum accuracy we need to say that the model can be useful? We have 10 categories. If the data was distributed evenly over the 10 categories, always picking the same category would give us an accuracy of 10%. Looking at the distribution of our documents, we see that the wheat category has 199 documents out of 572. If this ratio stays constant, picking wheat would give us an accuracy of 34.8%. We can then say that the model should exceed 34.8% to prove it is achieving anything. It turns out that we are getting over 78% accuracy. I did mention in video 14 on Spark ML Lib that the preferred machine learning library is the one that operates on data frames. It turns out that the functionality over data frames is not quite a superset of the RDD version yet. We can use some classes from the RDD version to get more information on the quality of our model by displaying the precision for each category as we can see here. We may want to investigate the documents on barley and lead to see if there is something wrong with these documents. This information comes with something called a confusion matrix. 
We first heard about it in video 24, but at that time we were dealing with a binary choice. This time we get a 10 by 10 confusion matrix. If you add up the diagonal and divide the total by the number of documents, you get the overall accuracy of the model. If you want the accuracy of a specific category, you can take the number that should be in the diagonal from a specific column and divide by the sum of that column. In this video, we saw how to manipulate text using hashing, term frequency, and inverse document frequency, and feed the result into a naive base algorithm for document classification. The precision varies with the quality of the input. Hopefully, this concrete example helps you better understand these concepts. See you next time on Bite Size Data Science, and don't forget to subscribe.